Hello, my name is Christopher Renstrom, and I'm your weekly horoscope columnist here on Astrology Hub. And this week, I wanted to talk to you about the Venus Kazemi taking place in the zodiac sign of Gemini on June 4th. But before I do, did you know that you could connect with me every week just by joining Astrology Hub's inner circle? Just go to Astrology Hub slash more Christopher. Again, that's Astrology Hub slash more Christopher to join. Plus, an added bonus is I happen to be the inner circle guide for the month of June. So it would be a great pleasure to see you then. Now, Let's get back to talking about Venus in Kazemi in Gemini on June 4th. Now, what is this strange word, Kazemi? Kazemi basically means in the heart of the sun. And what it refers to is the period of time when Venus and the sun are at the exact same degree in the sky. Now, as we've spoken about before, you probably already know what a conjunction is. A conjunction is when two planets are in the same place at the same time in the sky, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're at the same degree. It's only when a planet is at the same exact degree as the sun that you have a Kazemi. The easiest way to think of this is um, imagine an old school clock, uh, one that still had hands on it. Well, when the hour hand and the minute hand are in the same place, like for instance at 12 noon or uh, 3.15, you can think of that as being a Kazemi. The planet and the sun need to be at the exact same degree. If they're one degree off or a couple of degrees off, that's a conjunction, but it's not a Kazemi. Now, what happens when a planet is Kazemi? When a planet is close to the sun, you can't see it. Uh, this was very important in ancient times because they would look up into the nighttime sky and they would see the planets across the nighttime sky. And, and oftentimes, for instance, you could have a planet conjunct the moon and one didn't blot out the other. You could look at the two of them next to one another in the nighttime sky. But when the sun is out, as you know, during the daytime, you can't really see the planets. Occasionally, you can see the moon, like in the morning hours, but as for the planets, mm -mm, you can't see them when the sun is out. So what this was a reference to, the uh, uh, planet being conjunct or close to the sun, it was said to be within the beams of the sun. And that meant obscure. You couldn't see it. And it also talked to the idea that the planet's energies might be under the rays of the sun or somehow weakened or overpowered by the sun. However, when a planet was Kazemi, the sun, meaning at the exact degree that the sun was at, all of a sudden it stood in the heart of the throne world of the sun. And being in the heart of the throne world, you could almost think of a crystal room. The, the light would hit the planet and then the energy of the planet would burst out and refract against all the different crystals and become even more resplendent. So where a planet might be near the sun and feel a little bit weak, uh, much like someone trudging across a hot desert without a thermos of water, they're like, <laughs> you know, as they're like uh, trudging across the hot desert sands. When the planet was Kazemi at the same exact degree, it became resplendent and it became kind of a powerful, a very potent version of that planetary energy. So when we have Venus, Kazemi the sun, meaning at the same exact degree as the sun, like we do on June 4th, this means the powers of Venus are going to be exponentially multiplied. They will be grander, they will be more fabulous, they will be more spectacular than Venus would be on her own. So what does Venus rule in astrology? Many people say that it rules over love and relationships, and to, and to an extent that that's true. Uh, people will say that Venus describes your partner or your taste or what you look for in another person, what you find beautiful. And that's true, but I have found that there's a little bit more to Venus than that. Venus, in an astrological chart, talks about your powers of attraction not your powers in terms of the powers that you choose to wield or to use. It talks about your power of attraction. 
all right? Now, a lot of times we'll put on makeup and do our hair and wear something fancy or chic or something like that in hopes of attracting someone. It comes from the animal kingdom, like when birds go and sort of like puff up their chests and show off their flowery uh, plumage. This is done in order to attract the interest of a potential mate. And so Venus certainly rules over those ideas. But Venus is exhibiting, Venus is expressing attraction in your horoscope, in your chart, whether you know it or not. Now, for some of us, we may have a very strong idea about what we think are the qualities of ourselves that are attractive. And so we may accentuate that. We may um, sort of help it up a little bit in order to appear more attractive. But for others of us, we may have no idea what others find attractive about us, all right? We may think that we're not really that attractive or we're not really that remarkable. But depending on where Venus is in your chart, if that clicks with someone else's sun or their ascendant or their moon, they're going to be absolutely smitten. They're going to be absolutely attracted. And we may have no idea of what they're attracted to and, and what they're talking about when they start swearing their undying love to us. So sometimes Venus is in a position in your horoscope where we have an understanding of attractive um, and how it works. And sometimes Venus can be in a position in a horoscope in which we have no idea uh, what others find attractive about us. And sometimes that's a fun thing, like in a romantic comedy. And sometimes it can be a little bit more dangerous. Uh, because people can suddenly seize upon this idea of us that they find attractive that may have nothing to do with who they, who we are as people. And so they can begin to maybe manipulate us to become that person, or maybe they follow us wherever we go. Uh, maybe they become intrusive in our lives. Maybe they become domineering, you know, all these sorts of ideas. So it's a good idea to have an understanding of how Venus operates in your own astrological chart. Now here we're talking about a transit. A transit basically means a planet moving through the skies. And actually, the shorter version of that is, where's the planet now? Okay, right. So when we're talking about Venus transiting, okay, she's now in the zodiac sign of Gemini, and she's going to form a conjunction, a Kazemi, uh, with the sun. Then we know exactly where Venus is. She's at the same exact degree as the sun on June 4th in the zodiac sign of Gemini. And so that, that, that mystery is solved. We know exactly where she is. But how is this going to impact each one of the astrological signs? There are going to be some signs, like for instance, um, a Gemini or a Libra or an Aquarius, who are going to have quite a conscious understanding of how uh, Venus Kazemi is going to be working. But there may be other signs, like a uh, Scorpio or Virgo, um, who may struggle with the idea of how Venus is 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 working, how she is exuding her Kaziminus s in the zodiac sign of Gemini. So what I would like to do is sort of go through the different twelve signs and. Give some ideas, maybe some things to look for. Now, let's also remember that Venus is indeed named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty. And these are certainly the two main concerns of the planet. Uh, but the domain of Venus isn't exclusively romantic. Any sort of relationship that you form um, that is a partnering type of relationship is going to be ruled by Venus. So obviously we would think, okay, well, romance or marriage, that's partnering. Okay, well, that's easy, right? Um, but what about a relationship that you might have with a business partner? Uh, maybe a relationship that you have with a colleague where you really rely on one another. These are also ruled by Venus. And then let's say... Um, there's uh, the relationships like um, a creative collaboration. Let's say uh, you and another person are working together on a song or a work of art, or you run a restaurant. Um, that is, uh, uh, that would be ruled by Venus. Even relationships dealing with clients and customers 
are going to be ruled by Venus, uh, what they call customer service, where you want to get on the phone with the customer or or come out from behind the counter with the customer and make them feel uh, good and welcome about being in your store or your shop or something along those lines. These are all Venusian qualities because you are welcoming the person in. Uh, maybe you're helping the person pick out um, a shirt or a gift for for um, for a, a, a romantic interest. These these fleeting collaborations can also be Venusian, where two people come together and they're trying to create something beautiful, or they're trying to create something good, or they're trying to uh, uh, come up with what would be a wonderful gift for having missed your spouse's anniversary and something that will you know get you out of the doghouse and get your spouse talking to you again. Okay, so 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 these are endeavors that we join together. All of these things are associated with Venus as long as the intent is to create something beautiful and to create something good. This is the nature of Venus. And another idea that you want to keep in mind with Venus being in the zodiac sign of Gemini is that this is a mutable sign. And we're also talking about a Kazemi. A uh, Kazemi could certainly be uh, suddenly struck by someone and, and infatuated or drawn to them, or you're convinced that this is the most brilliant person in the world, or they're convinced that you are the most brilliant person in the world. But there isn't necessarily staying power. The Kazemi could be a very powerful start or a beginning or an encounter. But Gemini is not a cardinal sign, and Gemini is not um, a fixed sign. Okay, both those signs would sort of speak to perhaps more longevity. Gemini is a mutable sign, and so there's a kind of like you know, oh, that was fun, and you know, it was great. It, it was great talking to you. Bye. Okay, so this can be a sort of Venus in Gemini encounter as well. So whether it's a sort of passing encounter. Um, or whether it's a, an encounter or a partnership or a pairing that has legs, that all depends on how things unfold. So what I thought I would do is go through the 12 signs of the zodiac. And let's begin with the zodiac sign Aries. Now, remember, Venus is an attractor. So when I talk about Venus Kazemi and Gemini, what Venus is doing is that Venus is attracting into Aries's life, okay, someone of a Venus and Gemini type of character, uh, someone of a Venus and Gemini type of feel. So during this period of time, June 4th, and it may just last for the day, or it may last a week, um, or it may be the beginning of something that goes on longer and goes further, all right? On this day, Aries, you may draw people into your life who ask why. So what does that mean? People who come into the, your life who are asking the question why. They may ask you, why are you doing uh, what you're doing for a living? Why are you doing things the way that you are doing it? And why is a fascinating question, all right? Because why is we provide the reason why we're doing it, but why can also sound a bit challenging. Why are you doing this? Um, uh, like, why are you doing it? Like, what's in it for you? Or why did you did you choose this course of action? And so, this idea of why, this idea of challenging one's action, and the person would be challenging yours, Aries, uh, perhaps even challenging the way that you're thinking. Uh, the person might simply be asking, you know, why? Why do you always do it that way? It might be as, as simple as that. But you might take it a little bit more seriously, being an Aries, all right? So you might sort of take it as maybe a challenge to the way you're doing something. Uh, and so your response might be like, well, this is the way I always do it. You know, what's up with that? Um, or you may take it like someone is perhaps maybe undermining you. Um, you might even feel a little bit judged by this question, why, that the person is asking. But there's a little bit more to the conversation than that. As the conversation unfolds, you get to know this person, and it might be a friend, a colleague, romantic interest, perhaps. Uh, what you 
may also experience is that this person has the courage to say things that you wouldn't say, okay, that they have the courage to just sort of not only be why, um, but then also follow up. And they might remark about a situation or someone in a way that you wouldn't really allow yourself to do. And so this can actually be the start of a wonderful repartee. Um, Aries is a cardinal sign, which means you're very goal oriented, you're very directed. This is this is what I knew, need to do to get something done now. Okay, we have to always add the urgency factor to Aries. And someone by uh, maybe suggesting another way or an alternative or an option, you might find a bit confounding and at the same time intriguing. Uh, if you find it confounding, you might find this person very annoying and the conversation may come to an abrupt end. But if it's intriguing, if you're intrigued, if this person has piqued your curiosity, which is a Gemini standby word, uh, you might find yourself being open to different possibilities. You might be, you might find yourself being open to another approach. And as the conversation continues, and maybe uh, your association continues, you may be very curious about why this person asked why and, and, and what this person is up to. And what could begin to emerge is that this person, by doubting, is bringing out qualities in you that you might have kept on the back shelf. Aries isn't really into doubt. Aries is into challenge, but it's not really into doubt. Uh, Aries uh, really has an urgency which it attacks things, and so that kind of like doesn't permit doubt or asking questions. And so this association may bring this out in you where you find yourself freely asking these questions and, and freely voicing these opinions, but then this is where it can get dicey. If the friendship or the association hasn't really bonded, then um, once you hit a speed bump or once you hit something, uh, a, a bump in the road uh, in which you feel bad that you were questioning or you feel like, oh, you know, like, uh, like I was looking at an alternative and I shouldn't, I should just do it like this, you might end up blaming the person for having, you know, seduced you to the dark side of inquiry, <laughs> you know, for having gotten you to sort of play around with an idea. And you might say, okay, it's totally this person's fault. And, and that might be the end of the association. Um, and, and, and it's okay if it is, but what you're going to get as a result of this interchange with this person is the experience of owning your own choices. Um, instead of saying, well, this is the way it's always been done, You'll be like, well, I went through a process of questioning why this is the way it's always done. And I came back to realizing, well, actually, this might be the best way that it's always done. Um, or if you decide to choose differently or to uh, uh, try a different way of approaching a situation, then it's not someone else making you do it. It's you owning the choice. And this could be a lovely result of Venus Kazemi uh, in the zodiac sign of Gemini for your sign. Now, for people born under the zodiac sign of Taurus, this Venus Kazemi is going to be rather interesting. First of all, it's in Gemini, which is the zodiac sign next to yours. So that means it's falling in a blind spot in your horoscope. Uh, and, and a blind spot is any sign that's next to your sign in astrology. Uh, conjunctions are you're on the same page as someone. Opposition, polar opposites. Square, you're trying to get the upper hand. It's a struggle. Trying, it's complete sympathy, empathy, and rapport. And a sextile is putting aside your differences to work together for one another's mutual benefit. Um, when you have a planet like this, occurring, uh, appearing, showing up in the zodiac sign next to yours, this is called a semi-sextile. And semi-sextiles are, they're near, but they're not next to you. And they're in a blind spot. So think of yourself driving down the freeway or driving down a road. Um, and, and you know that cars can be in your blind spot and you don't pick it up, which is why you turn around and look over your shoulder. That's what I do. Okay. Or some people masterfully look in the rear view, uh, mirrors, you know, that flank. Okay. But, um, it's a blind spot. You need some help 
seeing something that you're actually already physically registering. And so that's why this semi-sextile energy can be a little bit um, uncomfortable. Uh, you know someone's lurking around, but you can't really see them and you you know want to turn around and, and, and see what they're up to, you know, sort of thing. And so this is going to be part of the effect of this Kazemi. What's also fascinating about the Kazemi is that um, it involves your ruling planet. Uh, the planet that rules the zodiac sign of Taurus is Venus. And so Venus is Kazemi. And so wherever, whatever Venus is doing in the sky, regardless of sign, be it Kazemi or retrograde, it is always going to impact you, Taurus, because she is your ruling planet. So you might find yourself during this period around June 4th, drawing people into your life who do things faster than you do. Okay. Maybe you have a method, you know, maybe you have a practice, maybe you have a regime, you know, and you need to go and do this and then do that and do this, you know, to maybe start your day or or um, to uh, set up a project. You have a format, all right? Um, and this Venus Kazemi may introduce someone who does things really zippy. Um, they 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 don't follow your format, and they don't seem to have a format, um, and they seem to be really zippy, and they seem to be getting things done rather quickly. And you might find yourself um, uh, uh, put off by this. You don't like this, you know, and you and and the more they're kind of like zippy, and and maybe they're even kind of like what you know, hey, you could do it like this, you could do it like that, you could do it like this. You know, and you might find yourself slowing down, which is what Torians do when they want to be resistant. You know, uh, when they want to get their way, they kind of like slow down the action, you know, or or you might find yourself really kind of like unsettled by this zippy sort of person. Um, but nevertheless, this is a precocious type of personality um, who has uh, climbed up the ranks really rather quickly. Okay, they, they, they've gotten a sense of the ropes, they've gotten a, a sense of the way things are done. Uh, maybe this person is even younger than you are. And so your tendency may be to, well, I'm going to resist or I'm going to move slower. Or maybe I'll start pointing out what they're doing that's wrong or off, or it's not the way that we do things. You know, you might start um, uh, 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 exercising your Taurus authority. But the whole point is um, to make you a bit uncomfortable, all right? So instead of being threatened by this experience, particularly if it's a younger person or a newcomer or the fresh face on the block, all right, um, the important thing to do here is to learn from the person. And I invoke this because Venus is Kazemi, that is your ruling planet, that is Kazemi and Gemini, which means there's something here for you to learn. Uh, and, and, and that's the point. So this energy, even, however it shows up in your life, even if it's the most annoying person in the world, I want you to take a moment um, and ask yourself what you can learn from this person, no matter how annoying or outrageous or um, casual or cavalier they may be. Ask yourself what you may learn from this person. Now, what you may learn from this person is what not to do, okay? Those are lessons too, okay? But you may learn something from this person. Uh, it could be information. The person might be like, you know, this is kind of like how we do it, or this is how you could do what you're doing better. It could be information, but it could also lead you to think about things differently. Um, it, it may be like, oh, this person has a point here with 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 doing that, taking this shortcut or not standing on a ceremony in such a fixed way. But you may find something that you can adopt from this person's approach and that you could put into yours uh, that leaves you sort of doing it your own way. Anyway, there's different ways we can learn. It's not just figures on a chalkboard or, you know, come up here and diagram a sentence or something like that. You can learn, um, you, you can learn from people because you may uh, spy something which looks like a really wonderful way of doing things. And that person might not even know what it is, but you know what it is. Okay, so you can sort of borrow from that person and put it into your own approach or into your own method. These are the sort of things to think about when Venus is Kazemi and Gemini on June 4th. For you Geminis, 
Venus Kazemi is a spectacular event. Okay, this is when your attractiveness is made even more so, and you'll find all these different personalities being drawn into your social orbit. And nothing could delight a Gemini more. Okay, Geminis love having people uh, drawn into their social orbit where they get to um, converse and visit and exchange information and, you know, share a fun fact or a juicy piece of gossip or get to know someone or or have someone get to know you. You know, it, it's kind of like um, it's it's like uh, uh, when monkeys groom themselves. Okay, <laughs> It's just they, they go and they groom and they pick things out and, you know, you get groomed and then you get to do the grooming. You know, this is a very sort of Gemini thing. It's very uh, frolicsome, but there's also exchange of information and pleasantries and everyone is getting along and coming together and really having a fun and, and joyful time. And this is what Venus will bring out. Venus will bring into your life people who, who do these sorts of things and whom you can uh, groom back, <laughs> for, for a lack of a better way of putting it. And so it's, it's a very wonderful time. Uh, different people respond to being attractive in different ways. Some people respond to a Venus transit, you know, where they're attractive, really almost as if they're like on a chaise longue, you know, as they say in Downton Abbey, or or whether they're, you know, enjoying um, a summer, a, 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 a sunbathing session. They just relish and, and, and enjoy the warmth of the attention and the affection. Some people uh, respond to attention suspiciously or shyly, or, you know, they're not really all that comfortable with it. Now, Venus, when she's in Gemini, you're going to respond to it as like, oh, there's all these different people to get to know that are coming into my life, and isn't this a lovely thing? And then you're going to sort of want to exchange favors, like kids trading trading cards uh, in grade school, all right? You want to... um See who this person knows. Who, who uh, Does this person know anyone you know? Does this person know anyone that you want to get to know? And so, so there's this exchange also of introductions and names and phone numbers and texts and all these sorts of things. And, and certainly this will be very, very enjoyable. But of course, as you can imagine, with Venus in your own sign, this is going to be um, asking the question of relationship. All right, is this a good time for love? And of course, the unconditional answer for Gemini is yes. Yes, it is. It's a wonderful time for love. Go on a date and um, and see where it goes from there. And it will probably uh, develop into something wonderful because Jupiter is hanging around uh, Gemini as well. And if it doesn't, you can apply the New York City subway train um, axiom, which is uh, if a train shows up in the station and it's full of people, instead of trying to push your way on in, uh, listen to what the uh, conductor says, which is there's another train right behind this one. And you can sort of like step back and let the train go and wave to everyone who's looking miserable and pressed like sardines. And then another train comes and it's empty and always only has a couple of people in it and you can breeze on in and enjoy yourself. So in other words, my long way of describing if a relationship isn't working with someone, toss it, go on to the next. Okay, so, so this is not, uh, Venus and Gemini is kind of like speed dating, all right? You can, you can sit down at the table, do a quick exchange. If you're not clicking, leave, go to the next table, talk to someone else. So this is very much what uh, will be the feeling and the flavor and the character of Venus Kazemi in your sign. But what it also asks on a deeper level is, are you ready for a relationship? Are you really looking for a relationship? And that might stop you in your tracks a little bit. Um, as a Gemini, there's a tendency to be one side of a coin that gets flipped. Okay, if you're the person who's wanting to be with the other person, uh, your head's the other person is tails and maybe ambiguous, confused, not so sure, not really convinced that they want to be with you or, 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 or with anyone. Or let's say you're the person who's confused and ambiguous and not really quite sure, you're going to find yourself being pursued by all sorts of people who are convinced that you are the one. So you have to ask yourself during this time that Venus is in your sign, um, getting to know people, meeting and greeting, that's fun. And that's a lovely exercise of Venus. And if that's all that comes of it, enjoy it. You're having a great old time, all right? But if someone is more serious or you're finding yourself having a more serious draw to someone who doesn't seem to be as serious as you are, test it. 
you know, um, maybe give it another chance or two, no more than that, um, to see what's going on. But on a deeper level, this is a really good time to ask, what do you want in a relationship? And I want you to really ask that question. I don't want your answer to be like someone who, you know, makes X amount of money, has, uh, you know, six pack for a body, uh, works at this, you know, not this grocery list. Okay. Um, What I want you to do is really ask what you want in a relationship and don't let it be cliched either. A best friend, a wonderful lover, you know, just no. Ask yourself, what do you want in a relationship? And don't try to, um, do particular qualities, but just sort of like, you know, wouldn't it be great to go out with someone who would love to go to a French movie? Okay. Or wouldn't it be great to go out with someone who wants to go bungee jumping? Okay. Just just be playful with the idea. All right. And just sort of like hold it in the back of your mind casually, not like you're desperately waiting to see, you know, what, what's the next. OK, but hold it in the back of your mind casually. And this can almost act as um, a beacon, uh, per se, uh, a, a beacon of light behind you, because Venus, when she's in your sign, Venus is the great matchmaker of the Zodiac. OK, she's not into um, here's the person for you. That's it. Great. You know, what it is, is Venus is going to match make when she's in your sign and introduce all sorts of different people. Could be romantic, could be professional, could be creative collaboration. She's going to introduce different people to see if you click or not. So the more humor you can bring to the situation, um, less criticism, more sense of play, Um, do you and the person play well, you know, in terms of like, you know, do you hang out in a way that's really comfortable or did you feel like you were on the entire time? Lead with those ideas and then see what emerges after Venus forms her Kazemi in Gemini on June 4th. For those of you born under the zodiac sign of Cancer, Venus Kazemi in Gemini is going to be interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun, but there might be certain times during this energy in which you might be having a little bit too much fun and you have to sort of back it up a little bit. What am I talking about? Venus in Gemini tends to bring, oh, let's just say, a litter of puppies, a litter of puppies, a litter of enfants terribles puppies that come bounding towards you because they know that they can get away with anything as long as they are in your good graces. What do I mean by this? Um, You may attract people into your life who are very precocious, who are very childlike. Um, This might even refer to uh, getting along really well with children during this period of time or younger people. But I'm talking about the big kids. I'm talking about the rascals. I'm talking about the people who really haven't quite grown up. And um, and an enfant terrible is a is a reference to a child that can appear more adult and sophisticated than it is. And there's also an insinuation of being brazen. Uh, The child may say something that's very matter of fact and even clever and rude and knows that the child can get away with it because it's a child. All right. Um, Enfant Terribes can also describe people who were very precocious um, as 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 children. Uh, Think of something like a musical prodigy. Okay, a child who is a great musical genius. You know, and everyone praises them, you know, oh, Mozart, you're three and you're composing operas. How, uh, what a prodigy you are, <laughs> you know, just a sort of thing. Um, and and so so they're a very special kind of child. They're, they're, they're a special child who is very smart or very clever or extremely creative and rather brilliant in their own sort of way. And that was really something when they were children. But now they are children no longer. Okay, now they are adults, all right? And that doesn't make them any less gifted, or that doesn't make them any less clever, or any less witty, or any less of a genius. But they may still have a child's view of the world, all right? They still may expect to be coddled. They may still expect people to stop talking when they're ready to announce something that's um, that's that's brilliant or, or sit down and play the piano or the pianoforte or, or a guitar. Um, they may expect people to be 
adoring, you know, to, to praise them for their unique talents and abilities. Then again, they may have a bit of the rascal in them. They may have a love of holding pranks or, or things like that. And um, uh, mischief, I think, is a perfect word for it. And again, you know, it's okay to be mischievous when you're seven or eight, um, but when you're in your teens, you're a juvenile delinquent, and when you're older than that, uh, you may be sort of leaning towards a criminal record. But anyway, as a cancer, you may be drawn to the child quality, not the innocence, but the mischievous quality, or the very unique quality about this person, and you may be rather indulgent of it. In other words, uh, you, uh, like a doting parent, you may play along. Um, like a doting parent, uh, when people are like, I can't believe, you know, uh, that person that you're going out with spoke to people like that. You know, you might be um, making up excuses and, and, and helping to cover the traces of this person. Um, there may be a colleague at work who really, uh, uh, really annoys and angers everyone else. And you may be the first one to protect this person and to and to talk about how ingenious they are or 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 if you have to resort to sharing pieces of information from their background uh from this person's background in which they had a very hard time of things um they were brought up on a desert island or something like that and we all need to be more patient you know as we as this person learns to socialize in other words what i'm saying is that you're presenting yourself as the human shield. If you're not making excuses for this person, you're shielding this person. Uh, and, and, and that's fine. You know, you're, you're, you're enamored, you're enchanted, um, you're delighted by this person's company. But you want to be very careful that your protectiveness and your sponsorship doesn't turn into something enabling. In other words, um, because you're convinced that this person's special and, and, and needs to be protected, you may be keeping this person or protecting this person from uh, censure or from people's reactions that this person wouldn't like um, or from simply reality checks that maybe this person should be getting. Um, everyone needs to learn how to socialize uh, in, in a way that is conducive to everyone else. And Gemini is certainly a zodiac sign of socializing. But if you're coming in with your cancerian parentalness, and, and if you're being protective, and if you're uh, shielding the person and making up excuses, you're not helping this person to grow up. Uh, you're not helping this person to socialize in constructive ways. And so whether this is a relative or a lover or a friend or a colleague, keep that in mind around June 4th when you find yourself maybe excusing someone uh, who, who should maybe learn to take responsibility for their own actions or when you're being protective of someone who maybe it's time in their, this person's life to uh, take care of themselves and not have someone like you running on in to the rescue. This Venus Kazemi for Leos is going to be fantastic, okay? Because this is going to bring people into your life who can really open up doors for you. The way that uh, Venus Kazemi is positioned in your solar horoscope, she is in an ascending aspirational position. So the idea of meeting people who are going to help you to aspire or who are going to help you up your game, who are going to help promote you, is going to be pretty much the order of the day around June 4th when Venus is Kazemi in the zodiac sign of Gemini. This is suddenly when people who promise to make introductions make the introductions. People who uh, promise to do you a favor come through with the favor. Uh, people who said, give me a buzz and let me see what I can do. This is when they call you back. Okay, so this is a really, really good period of time. <clears throat> what may also happen during this period is that the same sorts of people may be the ones who are going to take over the introduction, who are going to build the bridge, uh, who are going to get you to meet someone who can take you to that next level. But the way that they have of dealing with people may leave you a little bit shocked. 
All right. Um, being a Leo, you have a tendency to be very sort of straightforward. You can be gracious. You can be charming. You tell a favorite story or three. You know, you have a natural charisma that people want to be around. When you're being taken under the wing of someone who sees themselves as an agent of yours, a representative of yours, someone who is introducing you, uh, someone who may be even mentoring you, um, someone who's going to get you in the door that you haven't been able to get in before, um, this person's going to have a different way of representing you than you do. Uh, for instance, uh, this person may have a way of coaxing uh, people to come and see you, you know, where where you might want your record to speak for itself. This person might sort of like over embellish things. Uh, they may they may coax uh, someone. They they might uh, bump up your resume or add accomplishments and achievements that are news to you. You may also have someone who cajoles people. You know, who sits and laughs with them and expects you to join and to sit and laugh. Um, and you might be wondering where this is all going and why are we sitting and laughing like this? And and this person, you know, is is working their persuasiveness and introducing you into the conversation in a way that you wouldn't, given your own druthers, introduce yourself. Or maybe this person who's trying to make the deal for you begins bullying these people. <laughs> um, they begin saying, you know, well, you know, this Leo person that I'm friends with, what, what do they need you for? You know, you're lucky to even be sitting down and having a conversation with my Leo pal. Um, you know, and you might find yourself a bit shocked and embarrassed and, and, and like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, as this person sort of browbeats and bullies the people. Um, then again, uh, this person might be like, you know what? But this deal isn't going to work. So we're 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 out of here. Get up, Leo. We're we're leaving this situation. There's nothing for us here. You know, they may be threatening to walk away, and you might be like, wait, no, what are we walking away from? Um, or this person might start buttering them up. Um, in other words, this person is going to have methods, ways of promoting you, introducing you uh, to other people that you're going to be a little bit taken aback by and that you're going to be a little bit shocked by, uh, maybe even embarrassed. The advice is to play along. Gemini is very good, uh, is very big on play. Indeed, Gemini, uh, because it is the zodiac sign of siblings and uh, childhood friends, essentially you can look at Gemini as the zodiac sign of childhood. It has a very strong associations to early education in the neighborhood, for instance. Play is a big deal for Gemini energy, um, getting people to, to, to play. Uh, but also play lends itself to playing along. So in this regard, you might find yourself suddenly paired with someone in which maybe you're doing a comic routine or uh, one of you is tough cop and one of you is nice cop. Somehow the pairing is shown up in a way that you really didn't expect. And the advice is to play along no matter how audacious things get. Because when you're dealing with Venus in Kazemi in the zodiac sign of Gemini on June 4th, you're dealing with someone who knows how to get results and you don't want to get in the way of that. Venus Kazemi for Virgos will be taking place at the top of their solar horoscope. And the thing that immediately comes to mind is one of my favorite romantic comedies, which is Working Girl. Uh, it starred Melanie Griffith, Sigourney Weaver, and Harrison Ford. So in it, uh, Melanie Griffith plays a, a working girl, uh, basically someone who's trying to get into corporate life, uh, start cl climbing the corporate ladder in Manhattan, uh, and her name is Tess. Uh, her boyfriend has cheated on her, and um, she she uh, is leaving behind her old life, and she's going to go into Manhattan, and she's going to get a job. She, she wants to make something of herself. She's from Staten Island. Everyone in Staten Island isn't as ambitious as she is, and she takes a Staten Island ferry to Manhattan, and she wants to make something of herself in the corporate world world. And immediately, uh, she is hired by uh, Sigourney Weaver in, in the film. 
And Sigourney Weaver is, you know, she actually is hysterical in this movie. She's like a smooth talking boss, you know, and she's like, Tess, our working relationship is a two way street. You know, you funnel ideas to me, I'll throw ideas back to you. And this is how I, I expect to work with you, my secretary. Okay. So, being a Virgo, the story of, of, of a Virgo here, you know, like, uh, the, this is the, the secretary position, the, uh, the, the servant position. But, um, Tess, uh, has a has, has brains, you know, and she reads the newspaper when she takes the Staten Island ferry, and she makes a connection that if they were to, uh, if the company were to um, approach uh, Trask Industries, um, that they would be able to do something for Trask Industries that would make everyone a lot of money. Okay, this is something that she concocts, and it's a great idea. Um, Sigourney Weaver, immediately you can see that she, she sees the brilliance in the idea, but she goes back to like two-way street Tess, you know, and, and, and Tess is also treated as Sigourney Weaver's personal maid. She's often sent home to get dresses and to bring things back to the office or take things back home or to bring files after work, after work and, and things like this. And so she's treated like this, but at some point, Tess realizes that uh, the Sigourney Weaver character, her boss, has stolen her idea and is going to profit by it. And um, she is furious at, at that, you know, and, she, and, and Sigourney Weaver laughs it off because this is the way of corporate America. Uh, anyway, her boss goes on a ski vacation, has a broken leg, and is laid up in Switzerland. But at that time, the apartment sitter is Tess. So Tess has been apartment sitting her, her boss. Long story short, she, you know, starts to sort of like take, uh, uh, see if she could wear her boss's clothes. And, you know, she's frolicking around her in her boss's apartment, which is things that she'll never see in a million years. But somehow in all of this, she comes up with the idea of taking her own personal idea that she has and um, approaching a lawyer for another firm and uh, pitching the idea. And she does this, and the lawyer happens to be Harrison Ford, and he's like really, really good looking, and um, she's kind of like tickled, and she kind of falls for him, and he kind of falls for her, but what make what brings them together is making this pitch for a big corporation that she would never have been able to get into anyhow, but because she dresses in her boss's dresses and presents herself as whatever, um, Harrison Ford just thinks that she's part of Sigourney Weaver's department or team or whatever and is going to help her out. And so it it, it goes on forward and um, they, they fall in love and they're making the big deal. And this is when Sigourney Weaver shows up with crutches and, you know, uh, uh, declares, uh, uh, exposes Tess as a secretary and not, you know, a, 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 a player in, in corporate New York, you know, and all these horrible things happen and, and she's stripped. But the person who, uh, the person who they were selling to is convinced that, uh, Sigourney Weaver wasn't the person behind this idea, and Harrison Ford is convinced that she wasn't just an imposter. And so uh, the uh, tables are turned, Sigourney Weaver is humiliated, and it's Tess who ends up getting the better office in New York. Okay, why did Christopher go through this whole um, uh, uh, song and dance, this storytelling of Working Girl? Because, Virgos, you may be having a similar situation <laughs> going on in your life. Uh, you may be waiting on someone hand and foot. You may have had an idea that was taken from you. Um, you may be involved in a collaboration right now in which the other person is feeding off your ideas. And so what can happen here is that you 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 may be getting your creative energy siphoned or you might be getting your ideas poached. And so what this is going to bring about is rivalry, which is a word that we often use with Gemini, uh, particularly Gemini, which is ruled by Mercury, as is Virgo. So there can be a rivalry. And um, 
and a one-upmanship that's going on here. But Virgo, you might find yourself a bit on the losing end of that, um, in which you might be the other person is outsmarting you, or you're letting the person outsmart you, or you're coming up with excuses or reasons and, and things like that. And so what this Venus Kazemi in Gemini is going to force you to do is to own what's yours, is to engage in this rivalry, to engage in this contest with vigor. In other words, don't be, you know, the younger sister or the wallflower and, and to keep nurturing someone who is feeding off of your resources. What you want to do is to stand up for yourself. And by standing up for yourself, you will then be compared to the other person. And then everyone else can decide who they want uh, to work with, who they want to recognize, who they want to put in charge, if it's you or the other person. But as long as you're standing behind the other person um, and letting them perhaps exploit or use you, um, th th this is not a good thing. Gemini is actually introducing the honesty of competition. And if these ideas of yours are worthy, or if you're uh, the better fit in a match or a pairing, better that you stand forward, okay, and, and to let others decide who they want to ally with, rather than for you to forfeit your claim, forfeit who you are. And so the uh, Venus in Kazemi is bringing out the spirit of competition, and that's a spirit that I want to encourage you to embrace wholeheartedly. People born under the zodiac sign of Libra may be meeting and greeting someone who is from a different culture or an altogether different country. Okay, so this could be someone that you're working with. This could be a client. This can be someone that you've fallen in love with, all right? The person is from a different country. The person is from a different culture. Uh, this really references the ninth house placement in the solar chart of, of Libra when we're uh, placing Venus Kazemi uh, by transit in the horoscope. And so this is something that will naturally broaden your horizons. Okay, if you if you're working with someone from a different culture, a different country, maybe they speak a different language, um, that gets you out of your world, that gets you out of your comfort zone. Okay, and 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 this can actually be a really wonderful experience. And because the zodiac sign of Gemini trines the zodiac sign of Libra, it is going to be a wonderful experience. Um, this person might be fumbling with English, or this person might be really quite eloquent uh, in your chosen language. Uh, but then you're reminded that this person also speaks two or three other languages. Okay, so that might be something that's really like, wow, that's really attractive, that's really beautiful, that's really wonderful. But as you, you know, hear this person uh, talk on the phone with someone else in a different language or 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 uh, uh, switch to a different mode with someone else, uh, you might also be reminded of how you can't follow the conversation. Um, you might also be reminded if the person is from a different culture uh, that there are certain rules that that culture has that you aren't familiar with. You know, you might say something that uh, if this person takes you out with friends, that the friends might find offensive. Uh, you might find you might say something that's off color, or you might put your foot in your mouth. You know, with something like this. So. So getting to know someone who's from a very different background than yours can be very romantic and it can be very appealing. But what can also happen over a period of time is a question of trust. You know, are they one person when they're with you, you know, speaking a language that you share? And are they another person with someone else speaking a language they share that you don't know how to speak. Um, and this doesn't have to just be exclusive to languages. This could be, let's say it's the language of math. Let's say it's the language of music. <laughs> let's say it's the language of sports, you know, and you don't really know anything about the sport that the uh, person is going on with the other person, you know, something in which the references are shared, but they're not ones that you understand. Um, and what do you do with that in a relationship? 
do you sort of sit silently while they go and talk to their friend about something that you uh, can't follow at all? Or do you try to be included by asking questions or if they could say it in a language that you can understand? Or if this goes somewhere, do you learn the language? And do you sit down and learn about the about the culture? Uh, ask to engage in practices or rituals or, or meetings or, or people coming together. So that th- this transit certainly brings the potential for all of that. But I think that one of the things that um, you're going to be aware of is that things can get lost in translation. That if you don't understand all the cultural references, if you don't understand language, if you don't understand how they're communicating with other people in areas that you don't follow, you have a choice. You can either sit there silently and keep yourself in the dark, or you can become engaged with wanting to get to know. What it also brings up is a matter of trust. You know, is that person trustworthy? Are they saying one thing to your face and something else behind your back? You know, do they say, oh, you're really wonderful, but then like, you know, when they're talking um, mathematics with the other person, you know, is it done in a way that makes you feel isolated or like you're stupid? You know, so so these are things that um, you're going to want to address, not in an angry or frustrated way, but in a Gemini way, okay? And, and that's what a transiting planet in Gemini can do. Um, a transiting planet a planet in Gemini can get us to think in a Gemini way. And so you'll want to do it in a conversational way. You'll want to do it in a friendly way. You'll want to do it in a playful way. Um, but you're also going to want to do it in, what does that mean? Um, can you walk me through how that works? You want to lead with your curiosity uh, when you've got Venus in Kazemi with uh, Gemini, Venus in Kazemi and the zodiac sign of Gemini. And if you lead with this, you're going to find these experiences to be both enriching and educational. Scorpios, this Venus Kazemi in Gemini is going to be of a, hmm, I don't know what I think about that exactly kind of way. And the reason I'm saying that is because in your solar horoscope, Gemini is forming a quincunx to the ascendant, which is where we place your sign when designing a a, a solar horoscope. So a quincunx doesn't really quite get the ascendant from, from, from where it is. And so there's going to be this feeling that you don't really quite get what's going on. Now, with it being Venus in uh, Gemini in this particular area, this particular corner of the solar horoscope by transit, what it might pretend is attracting someone into your life who's going through a rough time. They're going through a real rough patch. And this person may have turned to you because they feel like you get it. This person may have turned to you um, for help. Uh, They may be a damsel or a dude in distress. Um, or this person might uh, be be very available to you in a way that they wouldn't have been normally. Uh, they feel like you get what's going on. They feel like you understand the intensity of their experience, and they feel like you also really sympathize with how crucial things are. And so as you get to know this person, and it might be someone you've known for a long time, but sometimes relationships can turn a corner uh, when you have this kind of an aspect that's going on. You know, it might have been someone you're friendly with, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, you're you're brought in on an area of life that you never knew was going on, you know, where the person has great need of you, um, and, and the person is... It needs rescuing. And, and remember, you're Scorpio. So uh, one of your ruling planets is Mars. So you can't help but go to the rescue. And so you, you may be coming to the emotional rescue of this person. Uh, you might be drawn together in alliance. You might be drawn together in a love affair. You know, um, <clears throat> this person may be like, you're the only one who understands me. And, and you're like, yes, yes, I do. And you might find yourself making love, you know, within moments of, of, of me. Or, or this divulgence of, of information. Um, but 
what you're going to also experience in this in this alliance, it could be romantic, uh, sexual, it could be professional, or 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 or, uh, or a friend sharing a confidence. It it doesn't have to just be you know romantic, but what you may begin to wonder as this person shares more and more of the story, uh, you may begin questioning: Is this person really a victim? of all of these horrible things that have gone on, or are you being used? Gemini is a zodiac sign that's associated to play. This is something we've talked about in some of the other uh, depictions of Venus, Kazemi, and Gemini with different astrological signs. Gemini is a zodiac sign of play, um, and, and it really rules over our early relationships. And our early relationships tend to be with siblings or play dates, you know, and, and it tends to be around play. You know, everything you learn about winning and losing, um, everything you were, learn about good sportsmanship or being a crybaby, okay, you all learn in early education, and that's the realm that Gemini is plugged into. But play can also refer to being played. and. Um, this is where perhaps the manipulation uh, element can come in. Uh, because a quincunx, the, uh, when there's a quincunx between um, Scorpio and Gemini, that's a natural quincunx there, the two signs don't know how to read one another accurately. They can be drawn to one another, they can be attracted to one another, but they don't always know how to read one another accurately. Uh, Scorpio is always questioning the seriousness of, of Gemini, and Gemini is always uh, questioning uh, the intensity of Scorpio. Does it always have to be so heavy? Okay, so when you're going through a heavy time, it might bring two people together because it's a heavy time, it's a rough passage, but it also might have brought two people together that would not have naturally sought one another out. Um, and, and that, for instance, is why I brought up the idea of a love affair, because love affairs can often happen in fraught situations like this, so that when the emergency or the crisis or the things that brought you together passes, uh, you can find yourself going your own separate ways uh, because it's not, it's, it, it's, it no longer has, it, it's, the association has lost its purpose. You know, if one person was a ship lost at sea and the other one was the port in the storm, you know, that ship lost at sea needs to make it to the port of the storm in order to feel comforted and held and protected. Okay, well, once the storm passes, uh, the ship wants to depart and go back to sea, and the port is no longer this haven, it's just a lighthouse or a dock. Okay, so so that's what I'm kind of giving you the heads up about. Help this person out in the way that you want to help this person out. Um, but also, this is a good time to also sort of keep that Scorpio skepticism uh, at the ready as well, because this might just sort of be the sort of thing in which circumstances brought you together. And just because circumstances bring you together doesn't mean that you'll stay together. And if that's the case, then be graceful in, in, in letting this person go or, or in parting company. You don't need another heartbreak or you don't need another grievance um, in, in, uh, on, your, on your psychic scorecard. Okay, you don't need that. Um, but at the same time, uh, if you do feel drawn to this person and the crisis that brought you together passes and the person is still there, uh, you might have just made a connection with someone that you've been wanting to make for a very, very long time, and it may be much more successful than you originally anticipated. Sagittarius, your story is sort of similar to what I just talked to Scorpio about, but it's also very different. Uh, Venus will be Kazemi in your opposite sign. And uh, many astrologers will refer to your opposite sign as being your partner sign. But your opposite sign can also be your opposite, okay? It can be someone who is a great distance or very different from you. Um, and the difference can be so great as to not bring the two of you together, all right? There can be a, a yawning gap between the two of you. But with Venus, Kazemi, and Gemini, 
And this is also working in conjunction to your ruling planet Jupiter going through the zodiac sign of Gemini. You may find yourself suddenly on the same page with someone that you might normally not have had anything to do with, uh, someone that you might have had adversarial <laughs> stance to. Um, all of a sudden, you're you're kind of like on the same page. And what you may be on the same page about is that you're both experiencing problems in your uh, respective relationships. In other words, you may be in a relationship with someone in which there's a lot of questions that's going on. And the person that's drawn into your life, who comes into your life via this Venus Kazemi in Gemini, might be mirroring you in that regard. They may also be in a relationship that um, that 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 is troubled or is going through a rough, difficult, or challenging time. And what I'm invoking here is Saturn traveling through the zodiac sign of Pisces. Uh, that will be playing uh, a role in, in all of this. So there's a kind of unavailability that's built into the attraction. Uh, the two of you may actually find one another very attractive, you know, and if things were different, you might have tried dating or something along those lines. But the Saturn in Pisces, working with this Venus Kazemi um, is also going to indicate that at some point, you know, what might be flirty or fun or hanging out or whatever becomes a hands off, you know, that um, it's, it's, it's your association isn't going to go there. Um, but what your association is going to do is give you someone to talk to about the things that you're going through. Um, you may feel like you can share with this person things that you can't share with friends or uh, family members or people who know you on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you know, your questions about the relationship, your doubts about the relationship, your anxieties, your mixed feelings. You know, if you were to share them with people who know you better, they might get very judgmental or they might get like, well, you know, what's wrong? Or don't you know a good relationship when you're in it? Or, you know, I, I can't believe you're being self-sabotaging. Okay, so so that might be, and you might be like, I really want to avoid that. So you might discover a camaraderie with someone who's going through the, the, the mirror situation in their own lives. Um, but also remember, it's mirror, mirror opposite. Okay, so, so, you know, they're, they're going through something that's similar, but it's a mirror opposite, perhaps, of what you're going through. But what brings you together is that you both feel lonely, you both feel like you can't talk to anyone about it, and you both feel very isolated. Um, and so what can emerge from this uh, Venus Kazemi in Gemini is a friend, okay, is, is someone who gets what you're going through, someone that you can speak to quite candidly and quite freely about what's going on, so much so that the two of you might become one another's supports, you know, um, you might become one another's supports for doing the thing that you don't know if you can do. Uh, maybe this friend supports you leaving the relationship. Uh, maybe you support the friend with giving their relationship another try, or maybe it's the reverse. It's Gemini. Okay. So, but what it is, is that it introduces a friendship, um, which isn't a typical friendship, a friendship, which is born of the difficulties that you're going through and a friendship in which you can share with this person, the difficulties that you're going through because they get it. Um, there may be a look, but do not touch, you know, a prohibition to it. And what I'm trying to do there is invoke the Saturn and Pisces. But in the end, you may be grateful for that because, you know, what might have been an awkward or, or difficult situation is you, you sidestepped it because what you really chose to enjoy with this person is a friendship. And that friendship may go on to be an everlasting one. For Capricorn, this Venus Kazemi is going to be rather interesting. It's going to be a bit of a twist. You may draw people into your life who are looking for a mentor, a teacher, an, an 
an elder, you know, someone that they can turn to for advice and education, to be shown the ropes uh, for tutelage, maybe even a sponsorship. And being a Capricorn, you're going to be, you know, uh, modestly flattered and, and, and be like, yes, yes, I will mentor you or I will show you the ropes or I will give you the education that you really need to have in order to go and succeed. You know, Capricorns love being treated, you know, as the elder statesman or the great vizier or, or, or the great teacher. But Gemini is, if it's anything, a zodiac sign of surprises. And what you may discover in what's supposed to begin as a sort of mentoring or a tutelage with the people that are being drawn into your life is that you're suddenly learning all sorts of things from them. You know, they have a different take on the way that you would do something. Or they take the information that you're that you're giving them and they uh, say, oh, do you know about this, that, or this? And you may find yourself like, no, no, I didn't know. And so they might be like filling in the blanks or bringing you up to date. And, and, and you're at a point right now, Capricorn, where you're pretty comfortable with that. You know, earlier in your life, you might have been sort of like, no, no, that's not the way it's done. It's done like this, you know, and, and that's certainly the period of time that existed before Saturn transited through Capricorn in the last couple of years. Um, and Pluto, of course, is winding up its stay. So, but with Pluto leaving Capricorn and the introduction of Pluto entering Aquarius, Capricorns have this sort of brave new world energy thing that's going on. And so you might find yourself very intrigued and fascinated by the way that someone would take your idea and put a spin on it or do a fresh take on it or do it in a different way. And, and instead of feeling maybe perhaps threatened by that, you may feel like this is inviting, you know, like you may feel that you are learning just as much from the person that you're mentoring um, as the person is from you. And what this does is that it like, it, 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 it makes you not stodgy, okay? <laughs> um, it, it, and, and it makes you not so parental. And it makes you not so, you know, uh, speaking, you know, as if you're the uh, font of age, font of wisdom of the ages. And it gets you into a more playful relationship uh, with this person. Uh, it gets you curious, you know, it, it gets you exploratory, like, like what would happen if we went ahead and, and, and did something like that? So this Venus Kazemi in Gemini is not only going to introduce people into your life with different takes on things or, or ideas of how, they, how you could do something, what you're doing, and then put a, a, a new twist on it. But it's also going to make it very playful so that you are learning as much from them as they are from you. And that just opens the door to all kinds of collaborations, alliances, and associations in your future. What's so wonderful about Venus Kazemi and Gemini for people born under Aquarius is that it's going to draw people into your life. It's going to attract people into your life who make you feel like a kid. This is a big deal. Aquarius is ruled by the planet Saturn, as is Capricorn. And there is a tendency for people born under Capricorn and Aquarius to not have a childhood. Um, you didn't have a childhood maybe because uh, certain uh, circumstances happened that broke up the family home or you had to grow up quick to help out res uh, with responsibilities or obligations, or maybe you didn't really have much of a childhood because you were older than your years. You came across with a great sophistication, and um, that might have been off-putting to the other kids in school, and so the people who got you might have been adults, and that's maybe who you hung out with, <laughs> okay? So Aquarians have a tendency to not really have full wholesome childhoods. Uh, they, they, it's, it's either they're growing up too quick or they're not fitting in with the people that they're going to school with. Um, so what happens 
with this Venus Kazemi and Gemini is that it brings someone into your life or maybe a number of people into your life who get you to feel like a kid again. Um, now, this isn't like, oh, we're going to make a daisy chains or we're going to, you know, play uh, ring around the maypole or, or, or all sorts of things. No, um, it, it, this isn't the innocence of childhood, you know, like I get to re-experience the innocence of childhood that was denied me. No, that's not what's going on. Uh, what it is that you're going to be connecting with people in a lighthearted way, in a playful way, in a little bit of a naughty way. Okay, so what do I mean by a bit of a naughty way? Mischievous, mischievous way. Uh, so you may know this person by uh, uh, maybe you attend a meeting and they throw you a knowing glance and you, you know, like a knowing glance, like, isn't this meeting boring? And you're like, yeah, okay. Or, or it might be that, um, you know, uh, you just got lectured to by a client or something and the client turns their back and the person rolls their eyes and you and you start giggling. Or it might be that this person comes up to you and starts including you in a private joke. Okay, so, so what's going on is that you might be attracting someone or a number of people who are kind of like being naughty. They're, they're not playing by the rules, right? They're being a little bit delinquent, you know, um, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing that's important, fun, um, that you enjoy the private joke. You enjoy that you're sharing uh, a way of maybe mocking or making fun of a third person. All of these things that Aquarians would never do in a million years, okay? They would never, you know, for Aquarius, the, the, the welfare of the group is so important that you would never make someone feel left out, uh, that, you, that you would never say something that would be off base, you know, but this person or a couple of these people coming into your life get you to do that. And it's fun. And that's what's important. It's that it's not going to be anything like, you know, you're not going to go uh, in, in a radically new direction where you become, you know, this awful, horrible, you know, bigot or awful person or, or slanderous person or anything along those lines. But it's going to introduce some humor into your exchanges. And whenever you have humor introduced into your exchanges, with humor comes humanity. Now, people often say that Aquarius is the humanitarian sign of the zodiac. Uh, Aquarians are humanistic. I don't necessarily think they are always humanitarian. Okay, and what I mean by that is that maximizing the human potential, uh, which is really based on the expectation that people should be better people than they are, is an Aquarian edict. But when you go with the idea that people should be better people than they are, that can sometimes be a little bit unforgiving of people's shortfalls or their shortcomings. And so when you introduce a bit more humor into uh, undertakings, you know, when when you act in little ways that you shouldn't usually act, that gets you to laugh, that gets you to giggle, that gets you to be silly, that gets you to um, be in cahoots with someone, you know, as you're whispering in their ear and letting them whisper into yours or, you know, secret look, looking at the text and, you know, typing back an emoji, you know, something like that. There, There's this kind of like wonderful cahoots quality that can come out. And that's the sort of thing that can get Aquarians to laugh, to be more present in the moment, and to be a bit more real. Now, you know, are you going to become a juvenile delinquent in your 40s or something like that? No, you're not. You know, this person is not a bad influence. Um, and again, because it's Gemini, this person might just be like passing through your life. But then on the other hand, this person might actually get you to loosen up and to sort of revisit things through a child's openness of mind or a child's playful spirit. And that's something, that's something that will definitely add a lot of pluses to your life. Venus Kazemi in Gemini is going to be a little bit problematic, but good for you problematic for people born under the zodiac sign of Pisces.
Now, I've been hearing from a number of you Pisces out there, and you're always saying, Christopher, you always, you know, give us a hard time and you don't let us like, you know, have fun or, or anything along those lines. We always have to like learn lessons and go through tests and things like that. And what can I say? You have Saturn, the planet of test trials, tribulations going through your zodiac sign. So you are being tested in a number of different areas, but not all tests need to be dreadful, okay? Not all tests need to be make or break. Not all tests need to be pass or fail. Tests can take place in different contexts and in different situations. And some tests can actually open up rather than make you feel like you're on the spot. And that's how I want to set up and introduce how Venus, Kazemi, and Gemini may be working in your life. Now, Pisces, as you know, is a water sign, and water signs are deeply emotional, okay? So that means when you're a water sign, you have access to your memory, you have access to your unconscious, you have access to your imagination, and you have access to the collective unconscious. Um, these are things that all water signs have access to, okay, is, is the deep pool of feeling the deep pool of the psyche. And so water signs are capable of great deep love. Pisces is known for, for being uh, uh, the most unconditional, potentially, of all the water signs when it comes to love. Uh, cancer has a tendency to keep the love tribal. Uh, Scorpio has a tendency to keep the love a little vengeful, or at least on the lookout. Whereas Pisces, Pisces dissolves all barriers and walls and can be very universal in its love. So Pisces, when it loves, it loves very fully, it loves very deeply. Also with Pisces, what you have going on is the idea, it's an expectation really, that people um all operate at the same emotional depth that you do, okay? Um, they're just not as honest about it. Okay, so, so if you're feeling this incredible love, this powerful love for someone, this forgiveness, this sympathy, this rapport, this, 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 this empathy, the expectation is everyone else is feeling it as well. And as I just said, they're just not being honest about it. Now, love is ruled by water. The element of water is connected to love, okay? And that's because you can love someone and someone doesn't have to be in your life. Or you can love something and something does not have to be in your life. Nostalgia can be love. You might not know that person anymore, but you have a love for those times. Fantasy can be love. You're absolutely in love with this person that you're never going to meet. The person isn't in your life, but that doesn't keep you from fantasizing or having a deep love. Love, all right. So, so um, love in a water sense doesn't necessarily need something or another person. Yearning is is a feeling of love, and the whole point of yearning is that you can't have what you yearn for, right? Air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Air signs rule relationships, and you can't have a relationship by yourself. Uh, relationships require that there be another person in your life. That's what makes it a relationship, all right? So um, air signs are very much about speech and talking and working things out. Uh, they're very much about taking into account what the other person, uh, where the other person is coming from. And uh, as a water sign, you might be like, I always take into account where the other person's coming from. And what I would say is not always. Air signs have a sort of discrimination and a hierarchical way of looking at the world that Pisces doesn't really have. Let's go back to an earlier statement that I made. Uh, Pisces is very deeply loving, it's powerfully loving, and it's convinced that everyone feels at the same depth that you do. And what you need to know is no, they do not. Think of a beach, a coastal, coastal beach, okay? There are some people who are never going to go in the water at all. They stay out in the sand and have an umbrella and they get a tan. There are some people that are going to go into their, uh, only up to their ankles. There are others that might go body surfing and there are others that might be out on a boat and they're doing deep sea fish diving or something like that. Okay, so everyone goes to different levels. They don't all, you know, go running from the beach sand and down into 
into the Mariana Trench, okay? They, they don't do that. They have different levels of being, of, of swimming, of feeling emotionally comfortable. Um, this is something that Pisces, you might understand intellectually, but not really emotionally. This encounter of Venus Kazemi and Gemini may bring up a romantic situation or a friendship situation um, in which you have very different ideas of what the emotional investment is. Now, this isn't different ideas of what the story is. This isn't two different versions of the story, okay? But you have, you're coming from two very different places. This is a square. You're coming from two very different places about what's going on emotionally and even how you approach it. As a water sign, you're going to rely upon rapport. Either the person gets it or they don't get it. Okay, and 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 Pisces has a tendency to really invest a lot in what remains unspoken. All right, just felt and unspoken. And feelings are meant to be felt. They're not meant to be talked about. Air signs, feelings are meant to be talked about in search of feeling. <laughs> okay, so so air signs are always they 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 can feel upset about something. Um, whereas a Pisces, you can feel about upset about something and you'll Lent, you'll give yourself to the upset and you'll go where that upset takes you. Air signs can feel upset about something and they need to talk it out. Okay. They need to work out what's what what's going on with that upset. What what started it? What what does it mean? How do I locate it? They 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 will they will analyze it. Um and there's this very strong tradition in psychology called the talk and cure, where you talk out things in order to unlock the secrets of neuroses or behavioral patterns or things like like that. Things that Pisces are very mixed about. The uh, Pisces can be like, okay, that might be a behavioral pattern, but isn't that just like what someone feels? You know, so so there's two very different perspectives. And what it will show up with is you with feeling. Feelings are meant to be felt. That's what's sacred. I have feeling, you have feeling. Be true to your feelings, and we don't have a problem. And the air person. Um, they don't have to be an air sign. They're the person that the Venus Kazemi is introducing could be a lover, friend, colleague, whatever, may have this insistence of wanting to talk about something. Um, and you may not be wanting to talk about it. You know, there might be something sacrilegious about talking about it or, or, or talking about it is going to ruin the feeling or it's going to ruin the moment. And this person might be wanting to talk about something to get closer to you, or this person might want to be talking about something because they're bringing things to a close. I mean, we don't know with a square, but we do know that the approaches are very different. And so what you can get from this experience is some insight. The first insight that you can acquire is that not everyone operates from the same emotional depth that you do, and that's all right. That doesn't make that doesn't mean the person loves you any less, you know, or is any less fond of you. You just operate and 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 live at a at a greater depth than they do, and that's that's fine. That's where you're comfortable. Just as the other person is very comfortable wanting to talk about things wanting to discuss things uh, because they understand that not everyone operates at the different depth. And so they're trying to like tune into the right frequency. They're trying to tune into the right uh, level where you guys can understand one another. And that's what they're attempting to do. And as a Pisces, you might find yourself being confused by that, or you might find yourself being overwhelmed by that, or 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 maybe exposed in a way. So these are things that can come out in this conversation that I'm describing. But um, what the result of this encounter may be, whether it's a significant relationship or 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 something that's more casual, is that. A result of this conversation will be that you will bring more depth to this person, you know, more of an emotional awareness, more of 
an emotional intelligence to this person. And this person, this person may teach you not to take things so personally and that it's okay to not take things so personally. Uh, not everything has to be so deep. Not everything has to be so emotional. And in not taking things so personally, you might even enjoy a little bit of relief.